Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, uh, so this is work as a collaboration with uh, Rennie Marillo, um, where when we are uh, uh, applying our uh, group theoretic and geometric techniques to uh, continuum systems. Uh, I'm going to actually discuss sort of three, uh, the, uh, three steps. First, I'll look at actually finite end systems. Uh, then uh, a discrete set of continuous systems and then a continuum of continuum systems. Uh, okay, so uh, we've seen uh, the Kiramoto model. I'm going to focus on what I would call a population of identical Kiramoto oscillators. Which uh, means they are, which which by which I mean they are described by the same ODE. Um, so uh, uh, for 26 years now, we've known uh, from Watanabe and Strogatz is that even you would think that the system has uh, n-dimensional dynamics, you have n oscillators. Uh, uh, they are n minus three constants of motion, which means that the dynamics. Uh, is restricted to lie on a three-dimensional uh, manifold. Uh, throughout the rest of the talk, I'm going to use complex variables, so it's sort of useful just to define them. Um, so these betas live on the unit circle, um, uh, and the governing equations have this uh, uh, generic form, um, which uh, is, a, is a Roccati equation. So uh, Marvell, Marillo, and Strogatz realized that this implies that um, the, uh, there is a Mo Mobius group operator that moves all of the oscillators uh, forward in time. Uh, the same oscillators, uh, the same operator moves all the oscillators forward in time. Uh, and this is a three-dimensional group, uh, which explains uh, the three-dimensional manifold. So you can, uh, if the same oscillator acts on all in, uh, the same operator acts on all in oscillators, uh, that generates a trajectory, P of T, uh, M would be time dependent. Um, and uh, you can, that trajectory will lie in a space, which we call uh, the group orbit. So the group orbit takes, uh, a representative state perhaps in the trajectory uh, and then acts on it by all the operators of the group and that 3D space the group or orbit is very useful in in analyzing this lower dimensional uh, dynamics. Uh, what we've done is to go a step further and look at the dynamics of uh, the group elements if you like on the space uh, as a, as a version of a collective chord. Um, so uh, if you look at these Riccati equations, they come in, there are two terms, and the first term will generate uh, a pure rotation, of omega, uh, uh, and the second term uh, generates a conformal transformation. Uh, both of those terms fix the disk and the unit circle, uh, which is why it's the 3D Mobius group that fixes the disk and the unit uh, circle that's relevant. So uh, sort of generically, uh, a finite end oscillator state, in this case, four dots on a circle, uh, moves forward in time by a single uh, group transformation, um, which really is comprised of two parts. Uh, the first part is the pure rotation, and the second part is this co conformal transformation. So the group element M is uh, parameterized by a variable zeta, uh, an angle on, uh, on the unit circle, um, and this uh, parameter W, which itself uh, lives in a disk. So that gives us the three dimensions. And so uh, we've, in a series of papers, looked at the correspondence between uh, the oscillator dynamics and the dynamics of uh, the, uh, the group variables. Um, so uh, uh, what's especially interesting and in, uh, uh, is uh, and gives new insights is that there are uh, geometric properties that follow. So um, one is that the uh, this conformal part of the 
of the dynamics, this uh, w, uh, uh, bilinear W transformation um, uh, uh, has a gradient flow. Uh, that means there's a, there's a real potential um, and the hyperbolic gradient uh, of that potential gives you the flow uh, of the group parameters, which uh, corresponds to the flow in the group orbit of the oscillators. Uh, but there is uh, another ge more related geometric uh, 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 consequence. So the, these Mobius transformations are isometries uh, on the Poincaré disk. Um, so that means this dynamics, Kuramoto dy dynamics in general, will uh, preserve certain, uh, will preserve all geometric properties of a certain class on, on the disk. Um, so we can use that uh, to, to rediscover uh, uh, a well-known result. Uh, so uh, here's an example of uh, a finite n, n equal to four oscillators. Uh, we know from uh, what an and stroh gets, there's one constant of motion, and I can construct a constant of motion like that uh, geometrically. So if I look at the four oscillators that uh, live, if you like, on the circle on which there is no uh, apparent geometry, um, I can draw two ideal triangles. Um, each of those triangles will have a barycenter, a center of mass inside the disk. So I now have two points inside the disk. Uh, they will move under the dynamics, but the hyperbolic distance between them is a constant of motion. Uh, okay, so having set up the finite n language, um, let me look at the continuum system. So first I'm going to look at a single population uh, in the continuum limit described by some density uh, or measure uh, rho. Uh, so this rho has to satisfy a continuity equation, um, which depends on this velocity, which is just uh, the velocity of the beta variable. Um, uh, from the previous equations. Uh, it, it depends on the, on the uh, um, order parameter, which is just the first moment um, of the beta variable. So uh, part of uh, Otten Anson's great discovery um, is that uh, Poisson measures uh, are invariant under this dynamics, meaning that if you start with the Poisson uh, uh, density, uh, you will get another Poisson density in the future. Um, and the Poisson densities that I show here uh, is parameterized by a variable, is a complex variable Z. Um, uh, and uh, Z is in fact the centroid of the density. Uh, it's a complex number less than one. It lives in, in uh, the um, uh, in the unit disk, which is of course where the geometry uh, is relevant. So here's a picture just of uh, uh, Poisson density for z equal to 0.6. Um, and a, a, a another sort of useful way to represent uh, uh, the density is, uh, um, I say the red dots would be a sampling of n uh, oscillators uh, distribute according to that distribution. Um, the blue dot is the centroid. Um, the orange curve is sort of some fakeish kind of picture that uh, um, represents weight. Um, okay, um, so it's useful to to interpret uh, uh, this analysis in uh, in uh, uh, looking for the dynamics for negative K, in which typically uh, flows to uh, an incoherent state. And so if I have the single population, it's straightforward to, to analyze. And for negative K, um, the centroid Z will flow to the origin um, Z equal to zero, which uh, uh, is a uniform density. Okay, so, uh, the next step is now to look at n of these densities, n populations uh, 
each described and by a different ODE. Um, and uh, if we look at the, uh, the manifold of that space is, uh, could either be called the Poisson manifold or uh, the discrete uh, uh, Art Antonsen manifold. Um, and it's described by uh, uh, a two-dimensional number for each population. So it's a two n-dimensional space and and the space is invariant under the Kira model dynamics if you start on the space you stay on this space uh, and uh, the uh, uh, dynamics of the centroids is very similar to what I had on the previous slide so now for each population um, uh, there is a uh, um, uh, an equivalent uh, 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 governing equation, um, but each population has uh, typically a different frequency, um, say omega j. And the total uh, order parameter is just now the weight, uh, the average of uh, these uh, centroids. Uh, so there's a lot of analysis uh, on uh, the OA manifold, um, uh, but an important question is, is is while these are solutions, are they are they representative? Um, uh, are they stable? Are there other solutions? Um, uh, it's a very successful technology, but if you just think for a moment, you can sort of smell that there's potentially something missing. Um, so, uh, what is what is curious is I've made this argument that that the oscillated dynamics is three dimensional. Uh, coming from this uh, Mobius group. Um, uh, but the Poisson centroids are two-dimensional. Um, so how does that relate? Uh, so generally, if you take the constituent oscillators uh, and you advance them with a, uh, with a Mobius group operator, um, uh, which is three-dimensional, uh, you can construct the dynamics of the centroid by simply you know, this first integral. And then through a coordinate transformation, you can actually uh, interpret this as the group action on the density or the measure itself. Uh, and so generally, uh, if M is a element of a 3D group, it, uh, its action uh, the action of the group on the density would give a three-dimensional group orbit of a density space. Um, uh, but the Poisson densities are actually quite special. Um, even so, the 3D group action on a Poisson density actually gives a two-dimensional uh, uh, group orbit. Uh, uh, what is interesting is if you if we start off with a Poisson density and uh, which has centroid Z, um, and now we look at the action of the operator M on uh, the uh, uh, Poisson density, you get back a Poisson density, uh, and uh, its centroid is just the previous Z, uh, the action of M uh, operating on uh, transforming. Uh, this uh, z. Uh, so again, you can sort of generically explore uh, certain fixed solutions. And so if we look at negative k um, uh, in the proximity of the uh, uh, um, uh, origin, the uh, 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 centroid zj will flow to the incoherent solution z equal to zero for each population. Um, so, uh, um, and this uniform population in some sense is an analog of display populations for finite in systems. Uh, but what always worried me is that, well, uh, finite in systems, at least for um, n bigger than three, have multiple uh, competing uh, incoherent solutions, solutions where z is equal to zero, um, uh, but they are not necessarily splay. So 
uh, here are two pictures for uh, uh, n equal to four. Uh, the one is play, the other one is not play. They both are incoherent fixed states. Um, uh, so uh, um, in a way, the Poisson densities are special, uh, not just because they have, well, it's related perhaps to the fact that they have a 2D group orbit, um, but uh, they are more like, say, n equal to two or n equal to three identical um, uh, uh, discrete oscillators. Uh, they have uh, only splay-like uh, um, incoherent states and they have no constants of motion. Uh, a, uh, the missing third dimension, if you like, in this description can be, can be understood uh, as, as an interesting property of, of um, Poisson dynamics, that if you were to track the individual oscillators, one of the individual oscillators um, in a finite in, or in a continuum system, uh, tech, uh, um, the, uh, so this uh, magenta oscillator, if you were to track that oscillator individually, um, it will rotate underneath the, um, the uh, centroid peak. Um, so there's a relative motion with the centroid um, that in this particular case does not contribute to the order parameter. It decouples from uh, the centroid itself. Uh, so the natural extension to go off the away manifold is to, to use Poissons, but not just one more. So, uh, so let's look at a double Poisson uh, measure. So we can simply add two Poissons equally weighted, um, uh, which will have a centroid. That's just the average of the two centroids. Um, and this space will again be uh, invariant under Kiramoto dynamics. Um, um, and of course it's higher dimensional. Uh, so now we have two centroids to describe a single population, uh, which in generally is four dimensional, unless, unless I start off with the two populations being identical. Um, and so we would expect 3D dynamics uh, for uh, the system. And you can, again, they have the same uh, uh, governing equations, but now for each population, A and B. Um, so, uh, but now, even though the state space apparently is four dimensional, you can immediately find a constant of motion. Um, if you, uh, 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 because both of these centroids, uh, uh, ZA and ZB live inside the unit disk, there's a geometric distance between them. Um, and uh, that hyperbolic distance is, must be a constant of motion um, under uh, Kiramoto dynamics. So uh, we can identify the constants of motion. Um, uh, that means this double Poisson, if, if I start off with two distinct ZAs and ZBs, this double Poisson cannot relax to the uniform um, uh, single Poisson. Uh, uh, so the, uh, it does have a, um, uh, a inhomogeneous solution uh, with uh, uh, incoherent solution, which would have ZA uh, be minus ZB, uh, which uh, in general will rotate. So um, the uh, 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 forward limit set would uh, appear to be a, a Lombard cycle. Um, um, I should point out that uh, um, the, the property of the decoupling of this third dimension uh, is, is a property of, of Poisson density. So if we have non-Poisson densities, then um, this third dimension, in this case represented by uh, the motion of the marked oscillator um, uh, will couple to uh, the, the order parameter and therefore to the centroid dynamics. 
um, uh, so you would, can imagine taking this limit cycle and extending it in the third uh, uh, periodic dimension. Um, and so the, uh, the general uh, uh, space in, uh, uh, of the forward limit set um, would be uh, uh, the surface of an invariant kind of torus with a quasi-periodic uh, orbits. So the first point is that uh, um, extending off the OA manifold going to uh, a double Poisson uh, uh, density immediately gives you new and richer uh, uh, behavior. Uh, additionally, they are constants of motion. Uh, and so there is no way that, that a double humped uh, density can, uh, at least Poisson density, can, can relax to uh, a single uniform density. And so uh, uh, there is a measure, there is a distance that can, cannot uh, uh, approach the OA manifold. So the OA manifold is not attracting. Um, uh, we can also finally look at, uh, as OA, uh, Otten Anson did in the original paper, look at a continuum of these continuous uh, populations. Uh, described uh, by the, the classic Lorentzian distribution, um, and this gate's centered at, at zero with group one. Um, and uh, now the macroscopic order parameter in their language uh, is the you know, uh, density weighted integral. Um, and uh, again, the space is uh, invariant under Kiramoto dynamics. Um, uh, uh, what is often uh, neglected and what uh, an Antonsen needed was a, a very particular uh, analyticity assumption for the function. So now there's a, the centroid Z uh, is a function of omega and it has to have uh, uh, the right analytic properties in the upper half plane um, uh, to have proper uh, dynamics forward in time. Um, and with this, it was, you know, it's quite remarkable that, that uh, they could not only solve for the order parameter, but it's dynamics. And so we get the generic uh, Art Antonsen uh, equation for the dynamics of the macroscopic order parameter. So we can do the same analysis now, uh, but say for double Poisson densities. So, uh, so we simply replace uh, the uh, 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 description in terms of one function z of omega by two functions z a of omega and z b of omega. Uh, uh, of course, immediately we, as we would expect, we can see that uh, for every omega, the distance between these two centroids will be uh, invariant under the dynamics. So uh, 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 you, uh, these are positive numbers. You can integrate them if you like. Uh, there is a measure of distance from uh, the OA manifold that doesn't decrease. And so the OA manifold cannot be attracting in this strict sense. Um, however, um, there's actually still something quite interesting. Um, uh, we can use with the same uh, uh, analyticity assumption, uh, we can uh, calculate the macroscopic order parameter for each density, so ZA um, and ZB, and find its dynamics, which is uh, uh, very similar uh, to, uh, uh, and uh, there's an extra line there. Um, but, um, um, and what is quite, surprising or what is interesting is that uh, uh, the, these two macroscopic um, order parameters approach each other uh, exponentially. And so um, uh, even for a double Poisson uh, density, the dynamics of the um, uh, total order parameter will uh, 
uh, approach that of the um, OA manifold. And it is uh, a, a, no, attracting in a weaker sense. So um, to conclude, um, uh, the OA manifold is generally not attracting for either for finite n populations of dense of continuum systems or a continuum of continuum systems. Um, but the macroscopic order parameter dynamics uh, of the continuum uh, of con uh, systems for the Lorentz distribution and the uh, analytic C assum uh, analyticity assumption um, uh, is, is, is attracting in the weaker sense. Um, just like finite in Kiromoto systems with these constants of motion, um, we, we can see that uh, the, if you look at multi-Poisson uh, densities, there will necessarily be many neutral perturbations. You can move from, if you jump from one, if you perturb from one, uh, if, you, if your perturbation changes uh, this constant of motion, you're on a different manifold. Um, uh, we've shown an example that shows uh, that the multi-Poisson systems typically have a more complicated, richer dynamics uh, than uh, the single Poisson OA manifold. Um, um, uh, the dynamics of the, the 3D dynamics of the uh, original uh, Mob Mobius group operators uh, can, can uh, 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 help you analyze this new behavior. Um, and uh, perhaps there's a fraction of, uh, of attendees in the audience who can go and reverse some of their previous OA calculations with multi Poisson densities and possibly find um, richer behavior. Uh, uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, uh, Eric and, and our former graduate student Bolin uh, for uh, 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 many useful discussions um, and uh, acknowledge funding support. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. This was a very interesting talk. <clears throat> There's now time for a few questions. So please use the Q&A to formulate your questions or make yourself um, visible. There is uh, somebody who raised the hand, that's Kestutis. So maybe I allow him to talk or her. I... Oh yes, yeah, I stopped my screen. Kestutis? Oh, unfortunately, my question was addressed to the previous speaker. Ah, <laughs> okay. So, so maybe you can write this question down to the previous speaker okay, okay. Uh, by email. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone else? Roberto, I'll switch to Roberto. Uh, please pose your question. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Can you listen? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. Uh, well, first, th thank you for your talk. Very interesting. And I would like to know how how do you apply the I mean your finite and continuum formalism to to specifically to populations, and how do you reassign, for example, the initial condition for the phases and base points when you subdivide uh, each Poisson kernel in in two densities A and B. Okay, so uh, let me, if I understand correctly, so firstly, the, the two populations, the distinct populations mean that uh, the oscillator has have different ODEs. So for instance, in a chimera system, uh, you know, there are two populations because there are two sets of oscillators that are differently coupled. They have different ODEs. Um, uh, so, so the governing equations is what you use to, to to uh, assign the populations. Uh, each population has 3D dynamics uh, in general. Um, uh, the, the initial conditions are, well, you know, the initial conditions fix constants of motion. Um, so uh, um, uh, the, that means the initial conditions tell you which group orbit you're on, which 3D group orbit you're on. There's a, 
n-dimensional space that's sliced up into 3D manifolds and, uh, and they are distinct. Um, the neutral dynamics means, you know, a perturbation can move you from one of these manifolds to another and you, you're never going back. Um, uh, so there's um, lots of neutrality buried into these systems. Um, um, that means you, you know, there are different technologies that we use to describe these systems and we need to be very aware of, of what you're doing. So there's a difference between, if you solve n coupled equations numerically, uh, numerical error would make you drift up between different group orbits. Uh, uh, um, you can use technologies to to keep you on a 3D group orbit, but if you start with an approximation of a Poisson density, you probably will drift off uh, the OA manifold, uh, the, the OA manifold that you were on, if you like. Uh, uh, um, so the the uh, uh, it's important to understand uh, how your analysis deals with these symmetries or constants of motion. Does that help? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, still time for one more question, if anyone has. Just wait one moment. Okay, if there's no more questions, please remember you can always write emails to our speakers. Um, with further questions and I would like to uh, thank Jan again for a wonderful talk. I'll just do my collective clapping again because that's all I can do. So <laughs> I hope this arrives to you in Boston and um, thanks Jan. So now it's time to switch to our last speaker which is